and it fascinates me. And I just, well, there's so many things that I want to change. So I think that's what I would have done. Wow. <laughs> I might still do not, it. Not, not the answer I would have anticipated. Like not even close. What did you think? What's going on guys? Matt Fraser here with HWPO Training. And today we are sitting down with two-time CrossFit Games champ, Katrin David's daughter. Today we are going to go over past, present, and future. Katrin, four-time podium finisher, two-time CrossFit Games champion, and the newest member of HWPO Training. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having me and taking me on the team. <laughs> All right, let's just jump right into it. So Past, present, future, we're obviously talking about, you know, stuff like how you got into sport, what your career has been like, and what you're hoping for in the future. So, um, first off, let's let's hear in your words, a little, little summation of your CrossFit Games career so far. Okay. I started, I first saw CrossFit when Annie won the CrossFit Games. Yep. So, she's standing on top of the podium. They're showing highlight reels um, on the news, and I was like... That's cool. I was yeah, like, like I a, really... another local Icelandic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and now my best friend in the entire universe. So that's super cool mm -hmm. that we now get to do that together. But um, saw her started CrossFit and throughout my whole when I did gymnastics, when I did track, I was the one I just wanted conditioning days. <laughs> I just wanted to do the conditioning. I just you're one of those people. Cool. And everybody else is like, Kat, no. I'm like, can we do conditioning? They're like, Kat, no, 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 no. Like, stop. Oh, coach, you forgot, yeah, you forgot rowing you intervals. You forgot the push-ups, <laughs> yeah. Um, so when I started CrossFit, I felt like the sport was just made for me. Mm. And I wanted to go to the game. So I started with that in mind. Um, I got to the games right away and kind of like, it's a whole animal in itself. Yep. Like suddenly you can be a beast at regionals and you get to the games and you're just like, oh my God, what is this? I don't belong. I don't know what I'm doing here. Um, so I kind of had two of those years Yep. Um, come 2014 and I didn't make the games. And the leg of this rope climb regional workout. We working, all remember. We're still working on my bullet. Um, so that was honestly like hindsight looking back an awesome year for me because setbacks like that really make you turn inwards and make choices and make decisions yeah. that you otherwise wouldn't have. And I, at the end of 2014, um, I actually was like, I was a full-time coach. I was a full-time law student and trying to train for the CrossFit <laughs> Games. <laughs> And I was just doing everything mediocre, which just okay, yeah. sucks. You, when you want, like, I'm. You, you're not proud of the results of any of the things you're doing. I'm doing everything normal. Yeah. Um, <coughs> so I just remember, like, making that decision of, like, I, I actually, like, I wasn't loving law. I did it because my grandpa was a lawyer and mm -hmm. I always wanted to be just like him. And I wasn't loving coaching. But I loved CrossFit and I was just going to take that one semester off while I figured out what I wanted to do in school. Cool. And it's insanity what happens yeah. when you go all in. And we end up winning the CrossFit Games in 2015. Yeah. And that's when I'm like, oh, so still to this day, fast forward almost eight years later and I'm still not back in school. <laughs> um, so on the podium for the next two years and then... Yeah, so, so you won the CrossFit Games in 2015 and, and 2016 16. back to back. And then took fifth and 17th, which is, that's a huge fall from being a two-time champion. Yeah. You know, so I remember that being a super tough year for me and like tough mentally. Mm -hmm. And that was a lot of things that I had to learn of like, I'd kind of like identified as being a CrossFit Games champion and like what's going to happen. And I yeah. know that you felt the same pressures of like, or I can imagine of like what's going to happen if you kind of feel restricted, like if I don't win. Yeah. Yes and no. Yeah. Yeah. You probably looks like you dealt with it better than I did. But yeah. You so I, I mean, I had a very similar feeling, you know, like I went in 2015, ba like basically expecting this to be served to me on a platter of, you know, I was like, oh, I'm second place this year. First place is retiring. I got this, you know, it was just young, dumb, naive, yeah. whatever you want to call it. Um, and then obviously, you know, got second place again. And that's, that's when I 
for myself really put an effort into making sure that my identity wasn't just competing on the floor. Yeah. I was like, because I know, I know I'm more than this one weekend a year. I know like I have more meaningful relationships or, you know, whatever it is. Yeah. But it was after, for me, it was after 2015, making it a point to have something outside of the space yeah. so that my entire identity wasn't just based on something that I don't have much control yeah. over. That's very true. One injury and that's, you're not nasty yeah. anymore, you yep. know? So I feel like I was learning that the hard way, real time, mm-hmm. 2017 and 2018. It's the be- best way to learn a lesson. It really you is. Got, you got to be in it. It's not fun. Cold turkey. It's I not know. fun while you're in it. Yeah. But then yeah. hopefully there's a value when you're on the other side. Exactly. And I feel like now mm-hmm. very much like you found Sammy, you mm-hmm. have your team, you have your family and your your wife. Well, and- you, you have You have a reason that you're excited to leave the gym. Yes. You know? Yeah. And Brooks has very much been that for me too of like, again, fast forward and I had another year of not making the games when you kind of like, now you're a games athlete established in the sport. And then again, don't make the games and very much showing up with the same weaknesses. It's kind of like, oh, it's a harsh reality. But again, like, and the same time of like, I was feeling the same pressures of like, oh my God, like, what if this, what if that? And then don't make the games. And it's honestly, this is so strange to say, but it's incredibly freeing because I was feeling (laughs) like this fear and this like acting out of like, there's almost like a desperation in it. And then the worst thing that can happen in my career happens. And it's like, okay, I still have the greatest man in the entire universe, (laughs) the greatest family. I still get to do what I love. I'm healthy. And I just feel free it, and it's like, it can all, it's almost dangerous because like lack of a better term, like you just realize your, your jaw wasn't made of glass, you know, like you're like, Oh, I can take this hit and I'm perfectly fine. Yeah. And then you get to dictate like, and now there's nothing to lose. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. So then, uh, what, what years did you get on the podium? 2015, 16, 2018. And 2020. Yeah. 2020 was second place. Yeah. I, I remember I, I remember talking to you after you, you grabbed bronze mm-hmm. and it was just like the sigh of relief. You were just like, oh, good. I'm, I'm so back capable. I'm still here. Yeah. Back on the podium. Like, all right, we're good. <laughs> yeah. Bit of an easier question, but I think we can dive into it a bit. Five years ago, did you think you would be doing what you're doing today? Um, like yes and no. All right. So what, what, what are the yes parts? So the yes part is that I actually, there's this, there's a girl that I work with and this is adorable. She interviewed me. She was a teenager then. Mm -hmm. And she had asked for her like college project to interview me. And she just sent it to me recently. And one of the questions was, where do you see yourself in five years? Mm -hmm. I was like, what did I say? (laughs) Because I was so excited to find out. And it was actually, I was like, dang, I wish I had a better, like a more like concrete answer, which I think now I'll start doing because I want to have heard that. But I said, I was like, honestly, I was like, I love what I'm doing. And as long as I love what I'm doing, I'm healthy. Mm -hmm. I will keep going. As long as I'm loving it and healthy, I'll keep going. And here I am still competing. Yeah. But at the same time, I look back at like when I took the semester off from school, I was always going to go back and do medicine. Mm-hmm. And now I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to be 30 next year. Like I'm not, I wouldn't be a doctor until probably in my forties. <laughs> I'm like, so I'm probably not going to go back. So I, ne- I don't think I ever assumed I would be doing it yeah. this long, but somehow another year rolls by and it goes by so they fast. Tick by. So quickly. so fast. Yeah. So I think like, yes, it doesn't surprise me that I'm here, but yeah, it kind of does. Like it just like it, one more, one more, yeah. one more. They, they add up. Quickly. Yeah. All right. This ties in pretty well. The next question. If it weren't CrossFit, what would you be doing? So, so, so you said, you said your original plan when you went to school was to be a lawyer. Yeah. And then when, when you took the time off, uh, for a semester, you thought, when I go back, I want to go for wanna, medicine. So if you go back 
10 years, I would have gone into medicine. Yeah. I, I can like hands down tell you that. And I think I would like, I what, love what, what, what aspect of it? Like my guess is I would have gone into like medicine to go into research. So that's a whole other topic oh, in itself. You want to be on the research side? I think I do because there are so many oh things. My God, I feel that like med- terrible. No, it's so much. Do you remember when we went to we went to visit the <gasps> professor up in Colorado? Yeah. And he was actually studying um how you could possibly cure cancer mm-hmm. through there's like through glucose or he was doing it through lactate yeah. and it fascinates me and i just well there's so many things that i want to change so i think that's what i would have done wow <laughs> so i might still do not, it not mm-hmm. not the answer i would have anticipated like not even close what did you think i don't know anything else literally like no that's still still to this day like the, like the side of medicine like like the the guy that we the sports lab that we went to so so a little little backstory um this is like the classic sports testing place like he puts you on a treadmill you have a gas mask on and you start out at a certain pace and he increases the incline or increases the speed every four minutes Mm -hmm. they're regulating your blood they're regulating how much air you're taking in how much oxygen you're actually absorbing how like how much volume you're taking in how much you're absorbing he's pricking your finger to draw blood every three minutes to measure your lactate levels um you know, so very involved, very high tech stuff. That stuff, I love the end result of it. Mm. But I just, I think back to when I had to do a lab in engineering and like, you don't know what results you're looking for. So you don't even know, you're like, is this right or is this wrong? It was, I hated labs. They were terrible. I loved it. Oh my God. Yeah. So for it, go back to then. I think that for sure would have been my plan. Go to now. I'm actually loving business. And that has come through. I never, ever, ever would have gone into that out of college yep. or thought that that um, appealed to yeah. me. But honestly, like what I'm learning now, and there are so many great people that we've met through our sport mm-hmm. that can like create such a cool team. And I'm sure I would have, I would go into some sort of business. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Like I, I always say it, like you become a sum of the four people you spend your time around. Like the, the saying that I originally heard was, if you have four broke fan, four broke friends, you will become the fifth. Mm. But it applies to so many things. Of if you have four friends that are really into fitness, odds are you're probably going to end up. Yeah. If that's who you're spending your time around, that's your influence. And so, same thing. Like, if you have four friends that are entrepreneurs and self-employed, you're likely going to be fifth because you have the resource. You have people to ask. You have. Yeah. You have those friends that. They have the knowledge. They've done it. And so mm-hmm. you can do it yourself. So I'm, I'm in the same boat. Like the idea of ever being self-employed was, I was like a not like, no, you don't do that. It's too risky. And it's like, well, and now no, you you're do here. It right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and also the part of like all of your friends and the people around you are too. So you have that freedom around, there's freedom around it. There's mm-hmm. also I see how much you work and everybody yeah. around us too. So there's freedom to it, but there's also such a responsibility to it. Yeah. Like I, you, d- you don't want to work eight hours a day for somebody else. I'm like, okay, I'll work 23, I'll work 23 yeah. hours a day for myself and but save we- myself the hassle. <laughs> 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 um, so this next one, there's no right or wrong answers. What, what about HWPO resonates with you? I feel like honestly, all of it. And I think some of it resonates with me and some of it I am so inspired and I admire so much that I want to reach to that level. And Hmm. a lot of that is going to tie back to, I mean, I've had such a privilege of like, we've known each other since 2014. Even before that. Maybe it was 2013 yeah, that we, I showed up at the swamp. No, we, we met each other before we met at the swamp. When was that? So we, we trained at, at CF&E. Was that before? And then we did, we did that team competition together. Oh, we were on a team. We were on a team together. I remember together. that. We won. Yeah. Holy and smokes. Do you remember what first place prize was? It was something like. It was spectator tickets to the CrossFit no. Games. No, was it? Yeah. And I think. I didn't know that was first. I, I think, yeah, I remember winning that ticket and then I also qualified for the game. So no, it would have been 2014. 
Yeah. Yeah. My rookie year at the games was 14. And I remember like feeling ripped off because I was like, I got a spectator ticket and as I the first place it, so prize. So why am I now getting instead? And then, yeah. Yeah, exactly. But so I, I let's go down memory lane for a little bit. Let's go back to 2014. What do you remember? So one of the, this is what I think is my first memory of you is that we met at the swamp and it was a couple of us there to train. Yep. O'Keefe was there too. Of course, and, O'Keefe was there. Yeah. And I, <laughs> so at this point, I didn't know who you were before this. And we were doing this workout and I think we were just playing after. And like, I think like me and Rachel were gymnasts. Yep. So we could do like a backflip. And then I remember you just like, you threw out like a round off like back tuck and like threw in a like a full yeah. um twist yeah and i was just like i was like oh my god i was like were you a gymnast and you were like no and i was just like what and you're like i just figured it out and that i and that throughout the rest of my career has also stuck with me and it's your fault that i felt so unathletic for the, my whole career i've had to like fix that because you just always could do things right away, and I couldn't. And <laughs> well, so for the record, there's very little I can do right away. I just, like, I grew up just, like, being a kid outside, and, like, like I, my dad was a stay-at-home dad that thought it was cool. Like, he, he, like, challenged my brother and I to, like, push the limits of what we could do physically. Yeah. So, you know, whether it's a trampoline, you really him. doing a trampoline or, like, whatever it was. And, and yeah. So, I mean, yeah, I, I can do a backflip 360 yeah. on the ground. It did not just happen. Like, I was, I was hucking myself as a little kid, just, like, bending the wrong way. But then you figure it out, and it's like, cool. Got cool it. Cool trick. So that's my, that is my first memory of you and just being like, holy smoke, that was cool. <laughs> um, but then, but then, you know, for the season after that, you, there was a long period where you were kind of like couch surfing yeah. around like with different members of CF&E uh, yeah. as you were training there. I, one of my earliest memories. So I remember that day that we were at the swamp, um, but I also remember, you know, like, I was staying, I was staying at Jeff Leard's house and you were staying oh boy, with, story isn't good for me. I think you were staying with Tracy O'Donnell, Tracy and Rachel. Yep. Yeah. I stayed and, with them a lot. And so then every day on the way to practice, I would leave, like, I think we had like an eight thirty start time or something. I would leave my house. I'd pull into your house around eight fifteen, and then you would get in the car around like eight thirty, eight thirty five, eight forty. 40. Something. I have to take ownership like, of this. And, and like, Every day, I would just get a little <laughs> bit, a little bit more mad, a little bit more mad that you were late, you're late, you're late. And then finally, I remember the last day I was like, if you're not on the front step at 8.15, <laughs> I'm leaving. And you were like, yep, totally. And that's when I found out he means at what he says. 8.16, I put my car in reverse. Back. To, I, <laughs> I remember pulling into CF&E, coming into the gym and Ben being like, hey, where's Kat? And I was like, I left her. I left her. And Ben, just like no reaction, just like, yep. And then he just left, got in his truck and went and picked you up. <laughs> so backstory to that too, it was like, I always had to get picked up because I was like under 25 and couldn't run a car or whatever that was. So I remember that also like, and now knowing you, like I when, when you say something, you mean it. And like, I, I should have known. All right. Um, all right. Let's jump into this season. What are you what are you most excited about to work on this season? What are you excited about this season? What are you excited to to learn or like grab from training with like a new group of people? I think the coolest thing and like the thing that I am the most excited about is that you look back at like I just remember being like young and fired up and mm -hmm. you have nothing else but CrossFit and it every day is so exciting. You just have that like fire in you. Yeah. Um and then I've been through years where that fire just kind of like dulls out. Yeah. And you also like at the start, you improve so much. Yeah. And you, then you're seeing that progress. You're getting those daily pats on the back of like, hey, PR here, PR here. Yeah. yeah. You're doing a good job. Like you're improving. You're yeah. getting better. And I think like getting back to what I said at the start when I was like, I was starting to have this like fear and this like almost like a claustrophobic feeling of like feeling like people are catching up with me mm -hmm. of like 
my progress is stalling. Yep. And there's, a, yeah, claustrophobic is like the, the best way. I just felt restricted. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's a tough feeling to be in. And it eats away at your confidence. And I honestly think that's the worst thing that you can lose. Yeah. Then you start, if you're not confident in what I'm doing, I'm, I'm looking elsewhere of like, what's her pace? What's yeah, that? And you're questioning everything. everything. And that's the coolest part that I have back is that <laughs> excitement. I, I feel like I have my fire back and my excitement. And I am so like what we're working on doing so many new things that like to you are so simple. It's just this, 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 yeah. this, and it doesn't mean it's going to be easy, but it's simple. Yeah. And it's, I think that's the most elegant and smart way to approach it, which mm -hmm. I told you, I wish more people knew. And you're like, I don't wish more people knew, <laughs> but it is. And I feel myself improving again. Yeah. And I feel myself just gaining that confidence in myself again. Yeah. I mean, I, knowing I, you know, having a rough idea of what you were doing in the past, you know, like we trained together for years yep. and then, you know, I, I left, um, but you know, I had a good idea. Like we were training partners for a couple seasons. We've overlapped every year at some every point, year. you know, we spend some time together and then knowing that like when, once you, you asked and it was like, okay, like let's put a game plan together and, and having a rough idea of what you're doing before and then seeing like what week one looked like when we sent it over, because you're, you're primarily your number one thing right now is strength work. So yeah. you're working with Rob Kearney. Um, and you know, so he's doing your strength training. I was kind of cracking up like day one, there's like three different types of squats, you know, and then it's like pulling, but then what a huge sigh of relief of you know, this is something so new, so different that it's like, like, yeah, we think it should work, but that's, it's only thought like we need to mm -hmm. wait until we see what actually happens. And I think it was around week five or six, you hit a lifetime deadlift PR when we were on like this, like four month track of strength training. And then it was like weeks, I think maybe in week six, I got the video and it was like, oh, cool okay we're progressing we're seeing we're seeing this progress happening already and we just yeah. are getting started yeah so that was super encouraging um but you know it's for me it, it's been fun like because you as an athlete i feel like i know it so well like we we shared the podium together a couple couple years at the games we were training partners and 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 i remember training with you and the there are a couple of lines that you said to me that stuck with me forever during training, but like, I have a rough idea of what's good for you. What's rough for you. What's tough, you know, all this stuff. And so seeing like week one of training going out to you, I was like, this is, she's never done anything like this before. And it's nothing. It's not rocket science. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, it's not easy, but it's simple. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, that's just, and it, you take it like 11 years into my career and to be doing something like still that's so new and like progressing in a different way. And like the, that's the coolest, like the deadlift PR you mentioned, like mm -hmm. I've never ever <laughs> PR'd my deadlift. I, I pulled my PR. Like, I think I was just so young and dumb and I wasn't scared of pulling it when I was like 18 and I've never PR'd. So to finally like, just be like feeling strong in those positions yeah. and not as scared to pull it. I was like, it was, yeah. I was happy that it's cool, day. Cool seeing that progress. <laughs> um, all right. Now, looking looking for the future. When, when, someday, like when you're done with the sport, I think a couple of things, you know, what, what do you want to be remembered for and what do you want like your legacy to be? I think there are a couple of things that like, I think something that, I try to do whenever I talk to a person, whenever I leave a room, like I always want to leave it lighter than when I mm -hmm. came in. And I think that's something that it's actually really hard to like know exactly what it is, but like mm -hmm. in my mind, it's just like light. I want there to be like a joyful hmm. side to who I am. 
And then I also like, I've always, and I like love working hard. I love doing things that maybe I didn't think I could before. Mm -hmm. And I truly believe I can do anything that I want as long as you're willing to do the work. And yeah. whether that is in sports or anything in life, like I just think leading by example is always the best way to go. And I want to instill that belief into others. Mm -hmm. So that's always, whether it's my immediate family members or something that we're so lucky to get to do with lights on us a couple of times yeah. a year. Um, I think that, yeah, if I could instill one thing in people, it'd just be like a spark of joy and a, yeah. and a huge belief in themselves and, and a fearlessness to, to actually go after what they want to do. I love that one. All right. Good. What's yours? Um, you know, mine, I always, I always want kind of along the same lines, but I wanted to be like that example of like, like I wanted to make it, make it, you know, to not glamorize the process quite as much. Cause I feel like so many people, like they think that like, it's going to be fun every day or, you know, whatever it is. But I wanted to be the example that like, no, sometimes you need to, you know, disappear for a little bit and like yeah. go work on your weaknesses. It's not always going to be fun and that's okay. It like, this is going to hurt. You yeah. know, it's, it's simple. doesn't yeah. mean it's easy but you can do it. And it's like trying, trying to show people that. Yeah. I think what, what was, the, what's the line that I heard? It was people overestimate what they can do in one day and underestimate what they can accomplish yeah. in one year. Yeah. And, and like, I don't think there was ever a single day that I left the gym and it was like, figured it out. Got it. I'm good. It's these little tiny Micro. things, these, these goals that, in the moment, I may not even notice or be, may not even be excited that I hit it. Rarely was there, you know, for me, it's like maybe once a year you have one of those lifts that you just like you're shocked it got overhead and you spike it down. It's a big celebration. Most of the time it's it's very unrewarding work. Yeah. Like you don't have you don't always have someone patting you on the back. So I think there's a combination of like, you know, find what you're passionate about, find what you love and and then do it because you love it, not mm -hmm. because that's what your network of friends is into yeah. or doing it the way that somebody else does it. It's like, no, find what you're passionate about and march to the beat of your own drum. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I, I, I just like that. And then it's like, if you're going to do anything, do it right. You know, yeah. dedicate the time to it, figure out how to do it properly. And you either, Sammy will like this line, you either do it right or you do it again. <laughs> <laughs> that's very true. So, um, but like once your career is over, what do you think you're going to do? That is like such a great question. Right now, um, I think once my career is over, I'd want to start a family. Yeah. I think that's just like the number one thing that is just, I think that's like, that's life after yeah. sports for me and us. And um, I think my like greatest longing and then me and Annie, are starting our own like daughter company and yep. we have like things that we want to build and um don't know much of this we want to launch but like we are building <laughs> daughter skin so that's one thing we would like to do some supplements of yeah. like and have it like be woman based and woman focused because so much of research has gone into men and she took this course with dr stacy sims where it's like women are not small men so like all of research has been done on what, how much protein men should take and hmm. when they should take it. And like women with their menstrual cycles, we, j we go up and down in ways and there's different hmm. timings. So there's so much of that, that we'd love to like, you know, come up with supplements for women and be educational at the same mm -hmm. time. Um, so there's a lot of that, that once I'm done competing, that doesn't that those years don't just keep presenting themselves to me. Yeah. Like that's going to have, I take I none of them for granted anymore. Yeah. You know, like I'm so thankful for every year that I still get to do this. And then once that's done, there's I feel like there's a whole life ahead of me that there are so many things that I'm excited about. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's what Brooks says too. Brooks is like like he he just says like don't rush it. Yeah. But when you get there it's awesome, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so, taking it all in. That's awesome. Well, Kat, thank you for the time. Hopefully you guys enjoy 
enjoy our conversation. Have a great rest of the day. Thank you, Matt. <laughs>